RimWorld has been updated to version 1.2, with a host of new features, and that's a great thing. Unless, of course, you're modding the game. Then the wait begins while all of your mods get updated. Since I'm playing a campaign on Twitch, this means reverting to a previous version and hoping everything works out for the best. While waiting, I decided to talk about modding RimWorld, setting things up, managing your mods, and proper load order. My name is Cal, I'm from Dirty Weasel, and this is Modding RimWorld with Proper Load Order. Where to begin? Well, how about where to get your mods? Basically, you have three real choices. Directly from the Ludeon forums, off the Nexus, or the Steam Workshop. Here are my thoughts on each. With Ludeon forums, you can engage with the mod authors and other users directly about each mod. You even get the works in progress and beta versions to mess around with. But, let's be honest, with no real search function, you are unlikely to find what you're looking for, and there's no auto-update feature. As to the Nexus RimWorld page, it has a great search function, and you can integrate with the Vortex Mod Manager. More on this later. However, perusing the offerings on the Nexus, I found that the listings were woefully slim, and most were severely out of date and therefore obsolete. That leaves us with the Steam Workshop. Normally, if we were talking about modding a Bethesda game, I would turn up my nose and sneer derisively. In this RimWorld application, it is your best bet. A robust search and categorization feature, the mods are plentiful and up-to-date, and most mod authors do engage with users in the mod page comments sections. More importantly, the mods auto-install and auto-update when subscribed to the mod. Also, they auto-install when you stop subscribing to them. So generally, this is my choice when modding my own game. Let's move on to the file system. Inside the RimWorld directory, the location of which depends on where you bought the game, GOG, Steam, etc., you'll have to find a folder labeled Mods. For me, it is on my games drive under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and then RimWorld. And you'll find the Mods folder. And inside of this, you'll, this is where you drop all of your mods. To install a mod manually that you've either gotten from the Ludian forums or downloaded manually off the Nexus, it's as simple as opening up the archive that you've downloaded, in this case a sample mods, using WinRAR or 7-Zip. Inside that you'll see I have a sample, and you can just drag it and drop it in. Now that sample, which has a bunch of contents in it, is a mod all by itself, and you can see I have another one in here that I had to download manually to get the correct file format. To make it all work but that's how you do it and as simple as that and it will show up your mod management tool inside the game very simple however you'll notice that there's nothing from steam on here and i assure you i have many many mods from steam the steam workshop on this game so where is that stored well you're going to have to go back to steam once again on my games drive steam steam apps workshop content and then the game id number for steam for rimworld is 294100 and inside this you will find all of your steam mods by the steam workshop mod number which is very confusing and you won't know exactly what you're having when looking at the steam mod page for rimworld it's not readily apparent what the workshop mod number is it's not listed on this page whatsoever and you can see I'm looking at Harmony here. If we go to the web for the same Steam Community Workshop page and look at Harmony, the directory number is right up there in the URL, in this case, 20094630077. Go back to your file number and you will be able to directly find 20094630077. So that's the best way to do it. Most of the time you won't need to know this information, but if you plan on modding the mod as it were, you'll need to know that. Fortunately, with the Steam Workshop, most of the installing and uninstalling your directories is handled automatically. With all that out of the way, let's talk about mod managers. You could use the in-game mod management tool. It is serviceable, but highly lacking. There is the Vortex by Nexus mods, but in testing I found that for RimWorld, it was a bit unreliable and a steep learning curve if you're using it just for this game alone. 
So I'm going to recommend using a mod naturally called Mod Manager by Fluffy. As an aside, Fluffy is an excellent and prolific mod creator who I can highly recommend for all of his mods. It has one dependency in order to work, and that's Harmony by Brains. A quick word about Harmony. It is not a traditional mod. Rather, it is a script extender that adds additional coding to the game that many other mods will rely on to work. The Mod Manager is one such mod. So, before starting, make sure you have the latest version of Harmony. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Let's go into the game and get the basics up and running and discuss the Mod Manager. So here we are in game. You can see I've upgraded to the latest version. That's just so you can see some of the problems and pitfalls that a good mod manager will help you with. Let's go over to the mods tab and open that up. And you can see all that we have activated right now are core and royalty. Now I did mention that the mod manager requires harmony as a prerequisite. And we'll scroll down and find harmony. We'll activate it. Now we come back up and you can see harmony is locked down red. So let's go ahead and move it to its proper position, which is up at the top. And we will discuss load order at a later time in this video. But for right now, that's where it belongs is all the way at the top. Let's also grab the mod manager and just install that right below royalty to start with. We're going to close it and restart the game because it needs to restart so we can update the mod list. Now, when we go back into our mods, you'll see something very different here as far as the mod manager tool. You'll notice if you click on each individual one, it will tell you things about it. The core, of course, the royalty DLC, and the mod manager will give you functions for this. And you can scroll through these different things. Starting at the top, you have a number of different search functions. You can put in uh, Giddy for Giddy Up, all the Giddy Up mods. You can do different things like Dino, and you can find Dinosauria. And you notice there's a red check mark next to it indicating that the mod manager has found that it is out of date. That's a different video. Also on this side, if you have a large number of actives, you can do the same thing and just put a mod and it will highlight the mod manager. On the bottom half of the page, you can see you have a number of different functions over here. You can start by mask, unsubscribe, or inactivate all Steam Workshop mods for the entire list on both sides. You can also mash, remove inactive or outdated or all local copies. That's a function that we'll touch on in just a second. You can also get more mods from Ludium Forms and it'll go directly to the Ludium Forms. There you go. And you can also go directly to the Steam Workshop and you get mods there as well. Down here at the bottom, you also have a re reset active mod list to a blank mod list. Are you sure? And it will remove everything in the mod list except for the mod manager and harmony oddly enough because that's that's the way it works they don't want you using a different mod manager uh but if you had a number of different mods in here you could do that also you have create local copy of all steam mods in your active mod list this would be if you wanted to not use any further updates and stick with the one you have this will make a local copy and it will be stored in the mods folder i showed you earlier inside your RimWorld directory, and you will not get any further automatic updates. And finally, on this button, you have create and apply and manage your mod list. Mod list allow you to quickly switch to sets of mods. And I have a number of them already set up. And if we, you can either save the current mod list, which we will call default as an example. So it's always goes to the default or harmony, core, loyalty, and then the mod manager. Then you can go ahead and load different ones. You can load a previous save. You can have default or your washer testing if you're doing mod testing like I am. And you can load the mod list very easily. Furthermore, you can go ahead and install this mod list either from a save or import a mod list from a string, which is something I will not cover here because it's a little more involved. So if you go ahead and click on a previous mod list which you no longer need let's say august 10th it will give you options you can either export the mod list to a string which i mentioned on briefly load that mod list for august 10th add to current list rename the list into something else you can change the list color which is very useful or delete the save list i'm going to not delete it at this time so let's go back to the default list and load that mod list and we're back to our original plan 
When you click on each of the individual mods, you'll have further options to do things over here on the bottom right. You can see the version, it, what versions it covers. The author, Andreas Pardyk, which is brains, by the way. And then you can also change the mod list color, change color for this version of Harmony only, or change color for all versions of Harmony. And then you have a full HTML color checker if you wish to do so, which can be quite useful when we start managing mods based off of categories. You can also create a local copy of Harmony that will be downloaded into your mods folder inside the game directory just for this one only. This one will do it for all your mods in your mod list and download them into that folder in your directory for the entire mod list. This will do it just for this one. If you wish to unsubscribe from this mod in the Steam Workshop, you would click this button, which I do not want to do. And if you want to remove the mod from the mod list, you can do so with this button just by clicking on individual ones. The main function of this is quite easy. You can actually go through and just start dropping things in by drag and drop. And you'll see you'll get errors. Depends on Hugs Libs, which is another directory like Harmony, and we will discuss that at a later time. But the mod manager will give you warnings. Uh, hospitality has the same thing. Hugs Lib is a very large directory. Mad Skills does not have that. But you can drag and drop each of those depending on where you'll need them. But that's basically it for the mod manager. Very useful. It will give you tips along the way as what needs to be where. Once you get a few mods in there, you'll see that you'll have a number of other buttons down here. Various warnings that are telling you that you have problems with your mod load order. You will also have a button here saying reset active mod list to a blank mod list, which we covered before. For each of the mods, you can actually go ahead and change the color. Let's say for Harmony, we'll change that color to, for all versions of Harmony, we'll make it a nice yellow color, and we'll choose that color gold, apply it, you can see the colors changed, and press OK. So now that you can see how those work, and this becomes very useful for categorization. But that's basically how this works, and how the Mod Manager works. We'll get more into this when we start talking about load order. Hey everyone, this is Cal. Just wanted to thank you for watching this video and to take a second to let you know that if you ever thought of supporting my YouTube or Twitch channel and get some merch in return, you can always visit my Teespring store to get official Dirty Weasel Media logo apparel or accessories. There are other designs on the shop, so take a look around. The link is in the description. Enjoy the video! With a basic primer of the mod manager out of the way, let's discuss proper load order. I'll do my best to break it down by individual mods that need special placement, and that will be followed by groupings by mod category. Right at the top goes Harmony, per the mod author's recommendation. Then comes RimWorld Core and the Royalty DLC if you have it. Everything below this are optional mods, but keep in mind the general load order placement rule. The mod lower on the list can overwrite those above it. The other rule is that any patches that enable two mods to work together the patch always goes below the mods in question. So, what do we start with? And that's going to be, as you see it, the mod manager. Just keep that at the top, right underneath royalty, and you'll be good to go. Underneath that, we have SRTS Expanded, which stands for Short Range Transport Ships. If it's loaded any lower, the ships will show up in the colonist inventory, which is not the way it was intended. Underneath that, you have Hugs Lib, a code library that other mods rely upon to work properly. Below that is Jex Tools, another code library, followed by Humanoid Alien Races, a specific mod that is unique in that most race mods go underneath much lower the load order, but this is a unique one. Underneath that, you have EDB, Prepare Carefully, or Character Editor, both individual mods do not use both of them as they conflict. More core libraries, which are file packets such as miscellaneous core, C O R E, and turret extensions are examples. Merely after the libraries, you would place what the hack. Then GiddyUp Core, followed by any GiddyUp add ons, i.e., GiddyUp Caravan, GiddyUp Battle Mounts, etc. Doors Expanded. Then Combat Expanded. I will note that this mod is a cluster. With so many patches needed for compatibility, 
I avoid it like the plague. Rimworld of Magic, Medieval Times, or Rimhammer would go here due to the fact that they all restrict tech levels. Now we get into the general categories of mods and their placement. Any of your map generation mods would go here. Grand Rivers, Archipelagos, Map, Reroll, etc. Then Factions, any mods that add new factions, but not new races or pawn types. Traits, mods that add just traits or additional slots for traits. Androids, Android Tiers, Miscellaneous Androids, and any other mod that adds robot pawns. Medical mods, mods that add new surgeries, bionic parts, etc. Architect, a dog said, and expanded prosthetics and organ engineering are examples. Note, mods that only add new items come later. These are things that add new procedures, like surgeries. And then what I call the trouble mods, due to the, how they overwrite the vanilla files. Psychology, hospitality, prison labor, dubs, bed, hygiene, simple sidearms. These aren't the only ones that do it, just the most common. Game behavior, mechanics, UI mods. Basically how the game works, including the AI behavior. Nearly all the aforementioned mods by Fluffy. Some offbeat examples would be things like hand me that brick and steel isn't flammable. So there's lots of them there. And as I mentioned, all of the fluffy UI mods would go in there as well. Then come all of your texture mods. There are just too many to list, so choose your favorites. Just keep in mind that if two mods change the same item, the one lower on your load order wins. And that's the one you'll see. Any items would come next. That's anything you can build, make, or find as a quest reward goes here. A couple of my favorites would be rim fridge and repair kits. Vanilla hair expanded needs to go here due to strange mod interactions. I'm not sure why that is. It's just, it just is. Any of your animal mods go next. They need to be this low. I'm not kidding on it. These would include all the vanilla animals expanded series, dinosauria, etc. New race mods come after the animals. All your vampire and werewolf mods go here if that is the way you roll. Level this needs to go below werewolves to work properly the way they interact between the two. Normally it'd be much higher, but put it this low. It will work. All of your facial mods that alter pawns because reasons. Just have it this low. You'll, you'll thank me later. Keep in mind that the above is in no way a comprehensive list of rules, just guidelines. You may have some unforeseen interactions between mods that will need adjustment. My suggestion is to try moving one of the offenders higher or lower in your load order, but within the same category to see if that helps and see if that solves your problems. That's all I've got for now. Hopefully, this will help you build a proper load order and you can get going on your modded Rim World game and have lots of fun. Thank you for watching. As always, my name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel, and I'm signing off.